I was born in Chicago, and I, my dad was in sales, so we bounced around a little bit. We went to New Jersey for a few years, and then San Jose uh, for most of my grammar school years. And then as I got into junior high, I moved to Tustin and, and lived there, went to Tustin High School. When I was a kid, I always planned on, on playing baseball in, in major leagues. And I, I just remember in eighth grade at my school, they had all the former class presidents on the wall. I ran for president and won, not because I, I really cared to, to be president, but I thought how cool it would be someday for kids to see a major league baseball player on the wall with the other pictures. And, and so that's, that was kind of my mentality. It wasn't really um, if, it was when. I was fortunate like a lot of guys who make it in sports, to have a, a father who was very involved, and um, he was a great coach to me all the way through my, my playing days. I signed a letter of intent to, to play baseball at Stanford, and then got drafted by the Blue Jays uh, as the 16th pick in, in the first round. And then there was a big decision, because I, I couldn't do both. I couldn't play at Stanford and play professionally. I ended up signing with the Blue Jays, but opted to stay at Stanford in the off season. So this is when I was um, turning 19 years old. And so I went to the fall and the winter quarter and left for spring training and, and played um, for two years. And I wanted to make sure that I, I, school was very important to me, and I wanted to make sure I had a nice chunk of that under my, under my belt in case baseball didn't work out. Yeah, when I signed, I, I got a, a lot of money for you know, an 18-year-old, really for anyone, especially at that time. Kids' charities from the time I was you know, a late teenager to now always um, kind of stick out for me because um, kids are the ones that oftentimes need a lot of help but don't have the ability to um, go out and, and make things happen on their own. They need to rely on, uh, on um, people who are willing to give their time or their, or their money or their resources. So um, I felt like it was important to, to give back right away. When I was a, a senior in high school, I read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance um, by Robert Piercig. It really resonated with me. Uh, I, 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 it felt right. and. I started diving in. I had a lot of time in the minor leagues on bus rides and hotel rooms to, to do some reading. So I read a lot of uh, books and did a, a very informal study of kind of Eastern philosophy. And, you know, due to some circumstances, um, conflict with my coaches, my manager on my first couple years in the big leagues led to a situation, which I write about in my book, um, where I was banned from the batting cage without, um, without their supervision because they were they wanted to change my style of hitting, and I was resistant to it. So I started hitting off the batting tee on, on a daily basis. And I hit off the tee here and there before. I changed the way I did it and made it into a very um, mindful activity where I concentrated on putting the ball on the tee the same way each time, taking a breath, um, taking the swing, really being present and feeling, um, feeling every movement. And, and that's when my game really transformed. I went from being um, a guy who was a part-time player to making all-star teams and, and kind of uh, shooting up amongst the elite players for, for a number of years. You know, I think symbolically it also is slowing down something that's moving really fast. It's stopping something that's moving really fast. And um, that's what's so hard about hitting is the timing of it, the changing of the speeds, and it really transformed the way I approached hitting by all of a sudden I was in control of my swing, now, I wasn't reacting to the ball coming at me. I stopped it and really worked on it. And then when, when I would go into the actual games or batting practice, uh, I, I was empowered. Yeah, the work that I did at the T um, really started to, to radiate into other areas of my life. You know, baseball, being a professional athlete, is there's a lot going on. There's a lot of pressures. There's a lot of uh, people grabbing at you in different ways. And I think having that 15 minutes, 20 minutes a day at the batting tee and creating this meditation where I was able to escape from all that and, and really be present helped me learn to be present in other areas even when I was, was off the field as well. As a parent, that's one of the, one of the things I'm most excited to instill in my kids is, is that, um, that gift of, of finding, being able to find peace and having your own tool set to do it rather than relying on other people or, or other circumstances. I mean, the, the future is um, it's, it's wide open. I'm, I'm enjoying some startup ventures that I'm involved in, in, in sports, social media. Um, you know, you never know what's going to happen. I, I'm fortunate to have played for a number of years and, and have the ability to, to make some choices now and, and see what excites me, but I, I believe that 
going forward and to have success as I did as a baseball player, I have to be passionate about what I'm doing and, and that's why I, I keep my eyes open um, for that feeling inside that this is the right thing and, and I, I stick with it.